Um, they want to know, like, what, what was back there? It was just a chair and a table for you to sit in, right? To, to That's sit. all. Yeah. And, um, and you're always... My in- husband had passed away, and I didn't want to work, and I couldn't feel like working or anything. And they called me to do this show. And they said, you don't have to sing, you don't have to do anything, but answer a few questions. I said, oh, all right. So I went, and I did the pilot. I did two pilots, one from American Airlines and one from United. <laughs> Sorry. I better pay That's attention. i got to be quicker on that. <laughs> That's a Sally Rogers coming Yeah, you out. go. I know, I know. I was thinking I she made, knew Audrey Meadows, too, so it makes sense. Her husband was a pilot. I made two pilots, one with... Uh, uh, here they are, Miss America. Who's that? Bert Parks. Bert Parks. Bert Parks was the first host, and Sandy Barron. Yes, those two did the first two pilots, and nothing happened. And then all of a sudden, Peter Marshall was there, and he's the best. It was so wonderful working with Peter, because he knew. Well, he's a performer, so he knew what you were going for. If you were going for a joke, he knew when to cut you off. He knew when you were stuck. He knew how to feed you. He was just wonderful. He was the greatest and, straight man in the in the world. Oh yeah, he's just just the best. Yeah. Okay. We have one more Hollywood Squares question, and we have a question about something else from Ron Cody, who's a listener of mine, by the way, and uh, mine and yours. What do you think of the later versions of the Hollywood Squares? And were you ever asked to be a regular on any of the later versions? And what do you remember most about being a guest on the Tom Bergeron version of Hollywood Squares after being away for the show for so long? Well, was it, it, it's, it's always, hello, here we are again. You know, it's nothing drastic or a different feeling. But you miss Peter on the... Oh, yeah. I, I only did a couple of those shows. And uh, that was it, because it it just wasn't the same. Yeah, yeah. And just it, wasn't the same. A lot of times when they do those remakes, the spontaneity of the yeah, original is gone. Yeah, it wasn't the same. All right, Christopher Brownlow wants to know how you liked working with the monkeys. <laughs> well, <laughs> when I did the show with them, the first show, they were brand new and very, very excited and very... I, what can I say? They didn't know what they were doing because it was such a shock to them that they were doing this show. And they were wonderful. They were adorable. Four adorable guys. Now, a year later, I did the show again, <laughs> and all of a sudden they became experts at everything. They were telling people where to go and what to buy and what to stand in the show and everything, which fame does a lot to people like that. They change all of a sudden. But they were great guys. They, listen, I've been very lucky. Everybody I've worked with has been wonderful to me. And I've always had a good time. I can't remember having a bad time with anybody. Wow. Well, let's segue to your just general questions on your career here from a few people. Mary Messenger or Messinger, I hope I'm not mangling your name. In your career, Rose, which gave you more satisfaction, the music and singing or the comedy and acting on television? Well, the singing started when I was three years old, so that was sort of ordinary to me. But uh, being an actress and being fu- being funny, I, I guess I was born with that because it, it just happened. And I, I found it when I worked at Versailles in New York when I was 16. Uh, Fred Brisson was the star. That was Rosalind Russell's father-in-law. <laughs> and uh, he was the star. And I was you know, an opener for him. And all of a sudden, I started saying things that just came to my mind. And, and everybody said, God, you're funny. Why don't you do more of that? I said, do what? What did I do? You know? And little by little, I would do more and more comedy unbeknownst to myself, (laughs) until my husband finally said to me, you better stick to doing comedy because you're very good at it. And that's how it got. I love doing comedy. I love being an actress because it's it's going down deep inside of you to 
to bring out what you want to bring out. Yeah. Well, I think you're just an all-around unbelievable performer. Let's go to Holly M. Blad. Happy birthday, Rosemarie. I love hearing you sing. What songs did you most enjoy performing? Boy, that's a toughie because you love everything. Oh, God, I sang 8 million songs. Well, I think I did them on the Van Dyke show. I did I Want to Be Around. That was one of my favorites. Come Rain or Come Shine. And uh, Cotton Fields. Oh, yeah, love that. I I did all of those, and I, I love them. They were... They were sort of my favorites. Janine yeah. likes Santa Send a Fella, don't you, Janine? Oh, <laughs> the lyrics are so cute on Santa, Santa Send a Fella. Well, Persky and Santa, Denoff, Santa, right. Santa Send a Fella into my life. Yeah. yeah. All right. Give it two seconds of applause for that. Okay, Eleanor Larson. Uh, the cliche is that all comedians are insecure and shy. <laughs> From the first time I saw you interviewed in the 60s, you have always seemed so confident and vibrant. Where or what gave you that confidence? You were just talking about that i don't know i think from the time you were a kid you were just a, a, a an outgoing i was person. you know people say to me did you enjoy what you were doing did you like what you were doing i said i loved it or i wouldn't be doing it my mother wouldn't let me do it if i wasn't happy and uh i just went on and on and on like i do today uh i go from one thing to the next after the van dyke show i did the doris day show I did a lot of episodic shows. Hollywood Square. And I just love it. And uh, it, it's it's joy for me. It's fun for me. And I love it. That's why I think I've lasted so long. I just went from one to another. And, and everybody loves you and everything you do. There's, it's, it's the easiest question in the world, I guess, to answer. Is was, you loved it and we love you. Ed Friedel, I hope I got that pronunciation correct. Is there something, oh, God, perfect timing for this. Is there something in your career that you wish you would have done but didn't? Annie, get your gun. Re you would have been great in that. Yeah, were, I would have loved to do that. Were you up for that at all? No, that was my favorite show. Uh, yes, I was up for it, but... I was working in Vegas, and I got a call from the office that they wanted to see me. And I said, well, I don't finish working until Thursday or whatever it was. And I went up to the office, and Irving Berlin was there, and... and, and, uh, and mm, She'll uh, think of it. Give her a second. She'll think huh? of it. Who are you thinking? Who are you trying to think of? Uh, the composer. Oh, well, that well, was Anyway. Irving. Well, that was Irving. Yeah. Um, they were all there in the office, producers, this and that, and they said, we want you to do any, get your gun. I said, I'd love to, in London. Oh. And I said, and I was pregnant, by the way, and I said, well, I can't go until maybe June. And they said, that's all right, that's what we intended to open in London. And I said, I have to have a nurse, I have to have a this. I did everything knowing I was going to have a baby. Didn't tell them. Didn't tell them. Because oh. I didn't look like I was pregnant. Yeah. So they said, fine. Money agreed upon. Everything was set. It was just wonderful. And I said, oh, my God. I'm finally realizing something I want to do. Comes May. May, my baby was supposed to come May the 23rd. And comes May, and nothing's happening. And they call me, and they said, we have a change in plans. I said, oh. They said, we have to take the theater a little earlier. Uh -oh. So we're, er we're going to open in, in April. And I said, uh, can't make it. Oh. And they said, what do you mean you can't make it? I said, I'm pregnant. She's due any minute. Oh, he's due any minute. It's due. And they any said, minute. you got to be kidding. And I said, why didn't you tell us? I said, because everything worked out time-wise the way you wanted to do it. Oh. And I just can't do it. I'm sorry. Oh. And so I lost that. And Dolores Gray got it and became the toast of London. Yeah, yeah. Well, would have been, well, it's not too late. Who can we get to play opposite her? Ed Asner. Ed Asner. <laughs> Ed Asner and Rosemary and Annie yeah. Get Your Gun. Uh, Lisa Bigger. We won't go into that last name. Who is the funniest person you have ever met? <laughs> 
That is a good question. Well, I think Maury, basically. Yeah, I was. Yeah, that's a good answer. <laughs> Maury. But you knew Groucho. And then, believe it or not, my daughter. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to think Groucho Marx, but no, you think Maury's funnier than Groucho. And my husband. Oh, my wow. husband had a great sense of humor. Yeah. That's why I fell in love with him, yeah. I think. Yeah, not quite the answers we thought we'd get, the, but interesting nevertheless. Anne Harvey, oh, what advice would you give to up-and-coming funny ladies? Well, that's a hard question because when you try to be funny, you're not funny. It has to be within you. You have to have a sense of humor. You have to look at everything differently. It's nothing that you can be taught. You can't be taught. Well, maybe you could be taught timing. But if you don't feel it, it isn't right. And you have, basically, you have to have a sense of humor. You have to look at everything in a funny light and just let go. Try to be funny and you're not funny. You're a pain. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's interesting. Interesting answer. Helen Zamora, is there any comedian or comedian today that makes you laugh or at least smile? Well, Jonathan Wind is always, <laughs> because I worked with him and he's brilliant. The first show, they were brand new and very, very excited and very, what can I say? They didn't know what they were doing because it was such a shock to them that they were doing this show, and they were wonderful. They were adorable, four adorable guys. Now, a year later, I did the show again, <laughs> and all of a sudden they became experts at everything. They were telling people where to go and what to buy and what to stand in the show and everything, which fame does a lot to people like that. They change all of a sudden. But they were great, and then all of a sudden... Peter Marshall was there, and he's the best. It was so wonderful working with Peter because he knew, well, he's a performer, so he knew what you were going for. If you were going for a joke, he knew when to cut you off. He knew when you were stuck. He knew how to feed you. He was just wonderful. He was the greatest and, straight man in the in the world. Oh, yeah. He's just, just the best. Yeah. Okay, we have one more Hollywood Squares question, and we have a question about something else from Ron Cody, who's a listener of mine, by the way. And uh, mine. And yours. What do you think of the later versions of the Hollywood Squares, and were you ever asked to be a regular on any of the later versions? And what do you remember most about being a guest on the Tom Bergeron version of Hollywood Squares after being away for the show for so long? Well, was it, it, it's, it's always, hello, here we are again. You know, it's nothing drastic or a different feeling but you miss peter on that oh yeah I, I only did a couple of those shows and uh that was it because it it just wasn't the same yeah yeah and just wasn't the same a lot of times when they do those remakes the spontaneity of the yeah, original it is wasn't gone. the same all right christopher brownlow wants to know how you liked working with the monkeys <laughs> well <laughs> when i did the show with them to do this show and they said, you don't have to sing, you don't have to do anything but answer a few questions. I said, oh, all right. So I went and I did the pilot. I did two pilots, one from American Airlines and one from United. <laughs> Sorry. I better pay That's attention. I've got to be Rogers. quicker on that. <laughs> That's a Sally Rogers coming Yeah, you go. I know, I know. I was thinking I she made, knew Audrey Meadows, too, so it makes sense. Her husband was a pilot. I made two pilots, one with... Uh, uh, here they are, Miss America. Who's that? Bert Parks. Bert Parks. Bert Parks was the first host. And Sandy Barron. Yes. Those two did the first two pilots, and nothing happened. Um, they want to know, like, what what was back there? It was just a chair and a table for you to sit in, right? To, to That's sit, all. Yeah, and um, and you're my husband in... had passed away, and I didn't want to work, and I couldn't feel like working or anything. And they called me 